Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with ExcelSmith, where our goal is to build better Excel users. On this episode of Solutions, we're building a few equations that allow us to filter duplicate values instead of removing them. These equations are built around count if, count ifs, or match. Check out the timestamps in the description below to jump to a specific solution. Let's get started. Excel has built-in functionality to remove duplicates. This is great if your goal is to remove the duplicate values. But what if we simply want to filter the unique values without deleting them? This video shows how to filter duplicates by using equations built with either count if or match. Each of these functions has its pros and cons. Count if is more intuitive and allows us to set a threshold for how many instances of a value our equation must find in order for it to return true. In other words, with count if, we can filter everything above the second occurrence of a value, or the third, and so on. The downside of count if is that it can start to slow down if there is a lot of data. This is because the count if solution scans every row of the provided range. The match version solves the performance problem. The match solution stops searching as soon as it finds a match. This means it performs better with large data sets than the count if equation. However, the match version is not as flexible as the count if one. Unlike count if, the match equation can only show whether or not a value is a duplicate. It can't show if a value is the third or fourth occurrence. Our first example contains a simple list of names. Our goal is to show just the unique values. We can see duplicate entries for John in rows 6 and 8, and for Stuart in row 9. We could use remove duplicates if we were okay deleting data. However, our goal is to filter out the duplicate values without deleting any data. The first equation we'll use for this is built around count if. Let's start by entering count if and an open parentheses. The first parameter of count if is the range containing our data. Normally, when using count if, we would enter the range for the entire set of values, which in our case would be A2 through A9. However, this solution requires a slight tweak to work properly. Instead of referencing our entire set of data in the first parameter, we want to build an expanding range. In other words, for the equation in cell B2, we want the range to be just the cell A2. For the equation in cell B3, we want the range to be A2 through A3. Cell B4 would have the range A2 through A4, and so on. If we don't use an expanding range and instead set the first parameter to the entire data set, our equation wouldn't work as desired. Each instance of our equation would show the total count for the corresponding name, in other words, the John in cell A2 would register as a duplicate because the equation would be counting the Johns in cells A2, A6, and A8. What we want is an equation that differentiates the first instance of a value from duplicate instances. For this to happen, we need our equation to count how many times a value occurs from the beginning of our data up to and including the row containing the count if equation. Let's set the first parameter to A2 through A2 to ensure the range of our equation expands as we drag down the equation. However, we don't want the start of our range to update, so we lock the first A2. This causes the first half of the range to stay put while allowing the second half to grow as we drag down the equation. In the second parameter, we tell count if which value we want counted within the range provided in the first parameter. For this equation, we'll select cell A2. After closing the parentheses, we need our equation to check if the value in column A has occurred more than once up to the row containing the count if equation. We do this by entering a greater than sign followed by the number 1. This will cause our equation to return a true if a name has occurred more than once or a false if it has occurred only once up to the equation. Pressing enter, we get the result false. Our equation returns false because the name John has only occurred one time within the range A2 through A2. Dragging down our equation, we get true for the values in rows 6, 8, and 9. We get true in cell B6 because the range of our count if equation in this cell has expanded from A2 to A2 and is now A2 to A6, which contains two instances of John. The same logic occurs in cells B8 and B9. The range of these count if equations has expanded to include more data which contains duplicate entries of John and Stuart. The way we built our equation, we receive false for the first instance of a value in column A and true for any duplicate values. If we wanted to return true for the first match and false for any duplicate matches, we would replace the greater than sign with an equal sign. 
However, our goal is to identify which values are duplicates, so we'll leave the equation as is so that it returns true if a value occurs more than once. The count if equation is great. It's intuitive and compact. However, it can start to slow down with large data sets because each instance of count if is checking every row within the range of the first parameter, regardless if it's already found a match. For large data sets, I recommend using a solution built around match. Match stops searching once it finds a match, which means it can be less taxing on Excel when covering lots of rows. Let's start by entering our equal sign, the word match, and an open parentheses. The first parameter is the value we are looking for. For the equation in cell C2, this would be the name in cell A2. Next, we need to set our range. Match, unlike count if, does not need an expanding range for the solution to work. However, we do want to include the header row. Let's set our range to A1 through A9. We will lock these cells as we don't want our range updating as we drag down our equation. Lastly, we enter a zero for the third parameter as we want our equation to return a value only if it finds an exact match. Closing the parentheses, we have completed the match function. At this point, the equation would tell us which location within the range A1 through A9 a given value occurs. Like the count if equation, we need to add a comparison to our match function to identify the first instance of a given name. However, we can't enter greater than one as this would simply check if the lookup value occurs in any row other than the first row of the range. Since match returns the row of the first match, we need our equation to identify which names don't occur at the row corresponding to the first instance of a given name. To better understand this, let's hit enter with just the match equation. For the formula in cell C2, we get the number two because the first instance of the value in cell A2, John, occurs in the second row of the provided range, A1 through A9. Dragging down our equation, we see that the values returned in cells C2 through C5 and C7 match the row of their equations. This means that these are the first instances of the lookup values provided in the match function. For cells C6, C8, and C9, we get a value that is different from the row containing the equation. The values in these cells correspond to the first instance of the lookup value in our name column. All instances of John return the number two because the first occurrence of John occurs in the second row of our range. Both instances of Stuart return the value seven, which is the row corresponding to the first instance of Stuart. Using these values, we can see that the first occurrence of each name occurs when the result of the equation is equal to the row containing it, as in cells C2 through C5 and C7. The duplicate values live in cells where the result does not equal the row, as in cells C6, C8, and C9. This means we can use the row function to complete our comparison. Let's modify our equation in cell C2 by adding the not equal sign, which is a less than sign followed by a greater than sign, and then the row function with no parameters. When we don't provide a parameter to the row function, it returns the value of the row containing the function. We use the not equal comparison operator because our goal is to return true for the duplicate values, which occur when the result of the match function is not equal to the row containing it. Pressing enter, we get the value false because the instance of John in cell A2 is the first occurrence of the name John. In other words, the result of the match function equals the result of the row function. Dragging down the equation, we get the same results as our count if equation. That is, falses which represent the first match in cells C2 through C5 and C7, and trues which represent duplicate values in cells C6, C8, and C9. If we wanted to capture which rows contained the first match instead of the duplicate matches, we would simply change the not equal operator to an equal sign. In this case, the formula would return true when the result of the match function equals the row containing it, which only occurs at the first match. The previous equations allowed us to find duplicates for a single value. The remove duplicates option has the ability to remove values that match across multiple columns. For example, removing rows when both the name and instrument match, like rows six and eight or rows seven and nine. Row two would not be included with the other instances of John because the John in row two has an instrument value of vocals, whereas the Johns in rows six and eight have an instrument of guitar. In other words, the name instrument pair in row two is different from the name instrument pairs in rows six and eight. We are able to modify our equations to require matches across multiple columns so that our functions behave like the remove duplicates option. 
cells C2 and D2 contain the equations from the previous example. To modify the COUNTIF equation to search for matches across multiple columns, we simply need to update the function name from COUNTIF to COUNTIFS. By updating to COUNTIFS, we can now add additional range and criteria pairs. Let's add the instrument range as the third parameter. Like before, we'll set this to an expanding range by selecting B2 through B2. We'll lock the starting cell of the range, leaving the ending cell unlocked. This will cause the range to expand as we drag down our equation. Next, we enter the cell B2 for our second search criteria. We could repeat this pattern of range then lookup value for as many columns as we want our count ifs function to examine. Let's press enter since our example only contains two columns. Our first equation returns false because the value pair of John and vocals has only occurred once up to the equation in cell C2. Dragging down our equation, we receive the value false for each name instrument pair in rows 2 through 7. We receive a value of true for rows 8 and 9 because these are duplicate name instrument pairs. The values in row 8 first occurred in row 6, and the values in row 9 first occurred in row 7. Selecting cell C6, we see that both ranges have expanded to include the rows from the beginning of the data, row 2, down to the row containing this equation, row 6. The equation returns false in row 6 even though the name John occurred previously in row 2. This is because the combination of John and guitar does not exist above row 6. Let's update our match function to also allow for multiple search values. Unlike COUNTIF, we do not need to use a different function. We simply update the existing parameters. To add an additional lookup value, we enter the ampersand after the value A2, followed by the additional lookup value, which in our case is cell B2. Next, we need to tell the match function where to look for this new lookup value. Like adding an additional lookup value, we enter an ampersand after the range A1 through A9, followed by the range containing our second lookup value, which is B1 through B9. Like the first range, we will lock the cell references for this new range so it doesn't update when copied down. If our data contained more columns, we could repeat this pattern of adding an ampersand followed by an additional lookup value in the first parameter, and an ampersand followed by the corresponding range in the second parameter. The only requirement is that the order of the ranges must be in the same order as their corresponding lookup values. In other words, if we list name and then instrument in our lookup values, we must set our ranges with names first and instruments second. All that's left is to press enter and drag down our equation. We can see that the results of our updated match equation equal the results of our new count ifs equation. We can now filter our data to show either the first matches by filtering either column C or D for the value false, or show only the duplicate values by filtering for the value true. Either of these solutions works great with a small data set. I prefer the count ifs version for smaller ad hoc situations when I know the amount of data won't increase. However, I use the match version if the amount of data might grow, as this equation would perform better. These equations could be used with conditional formatting to highlight the duplicate values if you don't want to add the additional column. You could then filter your data based on the background color applied with the conditional formatting. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, ring that bell, and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment below if you have an example of when you've needed to filter duplicate values. Thanks for watching.